I'm Michael Weidel, I'm a macro photographer, as you might know, but today I tried my wings for the first time ever as a wildlife photographer. And as you know, uh, if you saw my last video, I'm planning to do a bit of wildlife photography now during the winters, because the macro photography is not that interesting in the winters. Um, so I purchased this lens, the Sony 200-600, and today I went out with it for the very first time. And in this video, I want to tell you the nine things I learned today during my uh, wildlife photography session with this lens. I went to a lake not too far from where I live called Magelungen. And I went there because uh, I don't know that many good wildlife spots in Stockholm, but I know that at this place uh, you can find a lot of swans. Almost every time I've been there, I've seen swans around. And I also seen a lot of other birds. When I arrived though, I noticed that there were no swans. Not anywhere. And uh, not too many other birds <laughs> either. So I started walking around like uh, without a plan, trying to find some animals to photograph. And sure enough, I found quite a lot of animals and I started practicing um, this wildlife photography thing. And I didn't have that high expectations of this. I uh, just wanted to set like a baseline, see where my skills are at. Uh, can I make a photo that is uh, even close to beautiful or will my photos just look like <laughs> beginner photos, which they kind of are, uh, at least when it comes to wildlife. Um, so I went around, tried uh, desperately to capture some animals. Uh, you see some of the shots here, none of them are like that great. Uh, but I also just wanted to feel the camera and the lens out a bit. And the lens felt fantastic, but also fantastically heavy. So one thing I learned is that I definitely need to replace uh, my camera strap. This is the Peak Design. Uh, leash it's called this model and it's great I s love it a lot but when the lens is 2.7 kilos and the camera is a bit more um, I would probably need to get one of the broader uh, versions of this uh, I think they're called peak design slide um, that one would probably be a lot better thing number two I learned is that I should definitely bring some kind of pad to sit on when I'm waiting for the right moment to snap a photo because you will want to get low with the lens to get uh, nice uh, angles uh, to get some nice bokeh in the background uh, you want to get low with the lens and then you need to sit down and even lie down a lot and it's good to bring something to sit on so you don't get cold or wet or uh, whatever thing you're sitting on. Uh, so definitely we'll bring that next time I go out. Thing number three that I learned is that I need to find a good way of filming myself when I'm doing wildlife photography. <laughs> when I'm doing macro photography I just use my uh, DJI Pocket 2 and I often just hold it like this with one hand while taking photos with the other hand and it works pretty well. Um, but um, that does not work that well with this heavy lens. Thing number four that I learned today is that wildlife photography seems to be a lot about coming closer to the animals without scaring them away. And if you can nail that, if you have good skills at that, you will get great photos. Uh, everything else seems to be kind of secondary, at least that, my, that is my first impression after today. Uh, and I think today was extra hard probably because uh, there was no wind at all, it was completely still. And while that is nice in many ways, I guess that it's not great because uh, then the animals will hear you easier and maybe smell you easier as well. Uh, that's just my guess. So it will be very interesting uh, to go out on a windy day and see how that works. Maybe. If the wind is then blowing uh, towards me, maybe that can help me come closer to some animals. Thing number five I learned today was that I should definitely have brought a lens hood. Uh, I didn't do it because it was... Uh, I couldn't find it, it was in the packaging maybe, I will need to look there. Uh, but the reason uh, I should have brought a lens hood is not only because the sun was shining, I mean it's good to, to avoid lower contrast due to the sun shining into your lens but 
uh, first and foremost, it's a great protection for your lens, I, I realized today, because not only is this lens uh, pretty big and long and it's like easy to, to kind of ram it into things accidentally, but it's also pretty expensive, so I, I really don't want to break it or uh, scratch it too much, so uh, definitely will have the lens hood on always from now on, and maybe I will even get some kind of protect coating here many people have like this camouflage thing I think it looks a bit tacky but maybe I will get one of these uh, to um, become a bit more inconspicuous towards the animals and also to protect the lens uh, from damage because yeah it, it feels like I will definitely slam this into a few rocks and trees and stuff uh, <laughs> when I'm using it so um, I might as well prepare for that Thing number six I noticed today was that I discovered a whole new universe which has been very close to me all my life but that I have never noticed, been aware of or stepped into ever before. I mean, you walk in a forest, I've done that thousands of times, and you hear lots of birds, uh, bird sounds. And I never ever cared about these before because I didn't have reason to. I mean, I'm not that interested in animals, believe it or not. I'm My interest is in taking aesthetically pleasing photos, like photos that look good. And my medium to do that has been macro photography and now I'm trying to expand that to wildlife photography. That's pretty much all I care about. I'm not that interested in animals themselves. But uh, when you want to take nice photos of birds, for example, yeah, you need to start looking for them. So that's what I did today. I started listening to the sounds and looking for the birds that made the sounds. And I realized that I've never ever thought about how a woodpecker, for example, looks. And how you can hear where it is based on the sound. And how far away it will be based on how... Uh, audible the sound is, like all of these things, this world <laughs> that I discovered today, I've never even thought about it and that was kind of a mind-blowing experience. And all of this ties into what I call the Zen of photography, like the mindfulness aspect of photography. What I find so relaxing and enjoyable with photography is that as you walk around, you try to look for things to photograph, if you're a macro photographer, you look for insects. If you are a wildlife photographer, you look for other animals. But you constantly look around you to try to, to find things. And uh, this forces you to always be in the now, always be in the present. So if you're out doing a photography walk, at least for me, I'm always a lot more present and in the now than when I'm doing a regular walk without a camera. And that makes the walk elevated, I think. It becomes more of a meditation. You're in the here, in the now, in the present. And that's mindfulness. And I love that. And with the 200-600 lens searching for birds and stuff, it was a new kind of mindfulness uh, than when I'm doing macro photography. And I really enjoy that. I'm really looking forward to doing more of that this winter. Thing number seven I learned today was that while the stabilization on this lens is really good and impressive, I think, it is quite shaky still to handhold this. Um, it is definitely doable, uh, especially with this foot. Uh, it's definitely doable. I tried to do like this. Uh, but after just one or two minutes uh, of waiting for that bird to turn around so you can photograph it, you start to become tired and it starts to become really a workout and you start to lose patience and it's not that much fun anymore, it's definitely not convenient. So what I learned is that I should definitely get uh, some kind of monopod or tripod to go along with this. Otherwise, uh, it will be hard, I think, to take good photos. And now I understand why all the other wildlife YouTubers always have a monopod or a tripod. I, I think it's really worth it. Even if you don't have uh, their like big 600mm f4 lenses, um, even with this lens, it gets really tiring to handhold it for too long. 
And I'm pretty sure I will wake up tomorrow with sore muscles <laughs> from walking around with this for just one and a half hours. The thing though is that I still want the equipment to be as uh, compact as possible. Like I don't want a full monopod on here because also monopods are pretty long. So when I want to get low, uh, I don't want the monopod to be in the way. Like I would actually prefer something like like the machine guns they have in wars in some cases, or like on sniper rifles they have like two legs that that go down like this. Like something like that would be nice, I think, because I want to be able to get down low and and but still have some kind of stability that does not include me holding the lens with my hand. Do you have any tips on good ways to do this? Uh, I'm all ears. Comment below. So after walking around for more than one hour, I had long ago given up on uh, photographing the swans. I always saw them on the other side of the lake and I was like, I don't have time to go there. <laughs> uh, but I really wanted to photograph the swans because I know they are beautiful and pretty easy to photograph if you're not too far away. Then I was about to go home and uh, I started walking towards my bike and I saw the swans again and they were not too far away so I started walking towards them. Uh, I uh, sat down by the lake uh, closest to them I could be and then as I was sitting there they started moving towards me and then this magical moment opened up where I actually got some photos of the swans and I got a few shots of the swans that I really like. This one I find the composition great. I love the yin and yang dynamic here, how the two swans balance each other. Uh, but unfortunately this seems to be some kind of grass or something in the foreground that, that kind of uh, messes with the bokeh and with the contrast of the photo. I don't know, but yeah, some of these photos I'm, I'm quite happy with considering this is my first ever wildlife photo walk. Uh, so I'm really lucky that uh, I had these five minutes where I photographed the swans. But what this made me think about, and this is thing number eight that I learned today, and this is really important I think, uh, was that when it has been too long since you took a photo you're really happy with. In my case, I think it was like eight, nine weeks ago where I took a photo that I was like, wow, this is a good photo. I'm super happy about it. I'm stoked about it. I can't wait to go home and edit it and publish it somewhere. That feeling, that is one of the core feelings of what makes photography fun for me. That is like my motivation, my fuel for my motivation. And now it's been like eight weeks since I, I did that uh, for various reasons. I won't go into them. I haven't been able to go out a lot in the last few weeks. But when I today took a photo that I was really happy with, actually a couple of them, I got that feeling again and I got that super nice motivation, that super nice... I don't know, just pure happiness with photography and I was reminded again why I love photography and why I started this YouTube channel and why I just love doing this and I have had forgotten about that because it was so long ago I experienced that the last time. And uh, I actually was close to not going out today because I was very tight on time and, and when you haven't taken that nice photo that you are super excited about in a long time motivation can start dwindle down and you start like coming up with all of these excuses like yeah today the weather is not good enough I mean it, for me it was midday I had wanted to go out in the morning but I couldn't and uh, yeah I hadn't prepared the camera I have a brand new lens and, and I haven't used it and I should prepare the settings but I hadn't done that but it worked out fine anyway and I'm so happy I went out because now I've started that fire inside me again, that motivation to do photography again. And it's so important to kick yourself out there to take some photos when you haven't done it in a while because you need uh, to refuel with that inspiration. Otherwise you might stop with photography for good in worst case. And finally, thing number nine I learned today was that autumn foliage leaves in yellow and orange can be very beautiful backdrops when you photograph uh, birds on a lake. Uh, in Lightroom you can uh, try to move the white balance a bit to the right, to the yellow side, to 
strengthen this look uh, from the leaves and also maybe try to increase the whites of it, the whites slider and you get this look and I find it really nice, really, yeah, just a cozy autumn feel and a nice pop to the photo. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and see you very soon again in another one. Did you know that the future of this YouTube channel relies heavily on support by viewers like you? For $5 per month you can support this YouTube channel and in return you will get access to my library of 15 bonus videos. I make a new Patreon exclusive bonus video every month. The latest one for example is where I edit raw files from my Patreon supporters. I also do photo critiques, I do uh, exclusive macro photography adventures that nobody except my Patreon supporters get to see. So please consider supporting me on Patreon. It is very much needed and very much appreciated.